Hello, and welcome to another hometown daily news show. I am Mayor Watt. That is hometown.com. I don't know what happened. Uh, just for the last hour, my mic audio has been registering as being recorded, but did not get recorded. So I'm doing the whole show over again. Um, and it's just going to be streamlined. I'm going to get the, the news out and not soapbox at all. So the very first article is, uh, uh, Representative uh, Barry Loudermilk claims that a Capitol rioter he led on a tour was simply taking a photo of a golden um, eagle sconce light fixture. And um, I said earlier, you know, <laughs> what this comes down to is I've been on tours before and I've never been accused of a coup. So that picture and the, of a, the real context of this is that the other people that were led on this tour were taking pictures of things that tourists don't take pictures of. So it was basically a recon uh, effort. So when you click the link, you get taken over to this article at Business Insider and Brian Metzger is the author of it. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of the, the stuff about this, but... Loudermilk basically gave this lengthy explanation of the video to reporters outside of his office on Wednesday. Uh, but, you know, equivocation, all, all of this uh, verbal shenanigans, garbage is uh, flies in the face of the evidence that something hinky was going on. And there's a lot of documentation that suggests that uh, uh, whereas, you know, the whole stolen election stuff, there is no documentation that's legitimate. But this is legitimate. This is it's something you can see for yourself when you're watching these videos that people were taking pictures of things that a, a, a normal tourist would not give one uh, tinker about. They wouldn't care about a stairwell. Anyway, maybe, you know, this person was trying to look for ideas for lighting for their compound. Um. And let me back up so that I can post the links again. Uh, for those of you who might have come to my stream and didn't say anything, that well, there wasn't any audio, um, I'm just bummed. So <laughs> not mad, just disappointed, says Dad. Anyway, um, let's uh, just keep on moving through this. I'm, I'm going to keep on hustling. So surprisingly, the next article is in the Lawnard um, section. A uh, surprisingly small amount of top law school of this top law school's alumni are actually lawyers. Uh, when you click the link, you get taken over to AboveTheLaw.com and an article by Catherine Rubino. Um, let me, yeah, I threw the article in there already. When you read this article, you find out that it's Harvard, and a lot of people that go to law school end up in politics uh, and or business. Um, I'm actually looking into the idea of getting another master's degree in uh, law um, without being a lawyer. So you don't need to be a lawyer to actually understand the law and be able to speak to it from uh, the perspective of a subject matter expert. Um, because of your education, you don't have to practice it in a courtroom to understand the legality of things. Um, Hell, you don't even need to go to school to understand the legality of things. You just have to understand the law. Uh, subtle but distinct difference. But to become a lawyer, you have to go to law school and you have to pass the bar. Then you can be a lawyer. Otherwise, you're a JD if you go to law school. Um, at any rate, that's what this article is all about. So the next article is... In the Hatch Ideas channel, it's Tesla hikes U.S. prices across car models um, because nothing makes you a billionaire more than raising the prices during and uh, during inflation so that your margins are the same and everybody thinks that your whole business is sexy. Uh, and I'm just going to leave that there because for a previous hour, I was already soapboxing. So when you click the link, you get taken over to uh, CNBC and it says Tesla hikes U.S. prices across uh, their car models. Um, and uh, I was ranting and raving during the previous hour that it all comes down to the producers. 
The producers are the ones that are setting the prices um, and not the ones that are coming after it. Even if they're makers, they're the ones, the, the producers, the ones that are pulling stuff out of the ground and, and creating the raw materials from other raw materials. Those are the ones that are setting the price. And it's not. Um, it's greedflation <laughs> is what it is. There's a lot of money in the system and it makes it easier for everybody to purchase something if all of the prices were low um, because everybody would have money and be able to afford it. Well, you don't become a billionaire. You don't become a multimillionaire um, by allowing money to just easily flow into the system. No, 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 no. You have to make a pinch point where the below this threshold, you don't want their money because it's just not a, a big enough piece of money at one time. No, 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 no. Got to have the 30% margin, got to keep on raising prices, got to consolidate that wealth. Screw all of you. Um, that's basically the, the message. And we'll get to that as time goes on here in, the, in today's articles. Um, the next article is that Disney is selling a $110,000 per person private jet tour of all of its parks. That's pretty understandable right there's a lot of money in the system a lot of rich people out there apparently um and you can't set that too low otherwise you can't make a massive amount of money um, this is an article by grace dean over at business insider and it, I, I mean it's a fun trip it's around the world um, you're going to japan china india egypt and france on a 757 with private everything um, including tours and um, they go into greater detail about it. Yeah, I wish every plane was converted from 233 seats to 75 seat uh, leather seats in a two by two formation, kind of like the Ark, I suppose, but $110,000 per person. Um, the next article, and I'm gonna move fast through this because really uh, I'm not in the right state of mind for this. Um, after doing an entire hour of uh, discussion and, and um, news presentation for it to collapse like that is really irritating. Uh, everything from uh, OBS to my mixing board, um, everything says that there was audio, uh, but it wasn't recording my audio. <laughs> uh, so I'm really irritated at that. Um, anyway, Apple iOS 16 lets you remove 29 stocks. There's a lot of duplicates in this list. I, I'm not quite sure why they're referring to it as 29 stocks, uh, stock apps. I mean, um, but you can remove now apparently a bunch more, uh, Apple apps. I didn't know that there were iOS that many iOS uh, stock apps, but apparently there are this articles over at appleinsider.com by William Gallagher. Uh, I'm just going to keep on rolling through this. I'm. I'm done for today. Um, the next article is over in the Stock Marketeers channel. Uh, here's the comment from Powell that could make it hard for the Fed to slow down the price of interest or uh, the pace of interest rate hikes. Uh, when you click the link, you're taken over to uh, Market Watch. And the uh, author of this article is Steve Goldstein. The rise of inflation expectations was eye catching, says the Fed chief. Um, and uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be caught off guard by this. You see the leading indicators, at least you should. Um, and I've been pointing it out. It's always fuel. It's gas. Gas is the leading indicator. You don't see weak gas and low and high prices. No, 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 no. You see low prices, low gas. You see high prices, you see high gas. You see extremely high gas, you see extremely high prices. Um, and that's why gas and the companies have had record profits and inflation shooting through the roof, CPI screwing everybody. Um, you know, when you go and buy $200 worth of product and you normally get twice as much, there's a real concern here. Um, and I am already predicting that we're going to hit about 13% inflation by the end of November. And I think that the prices for um, beef steak um, are going to go really through the roof for y'all here coming soon. So 
Um, again, the, it's all greedflation. It's all greedflation. Um, so it's the, they say here, Powell says, um, we got the CPI data and some data on inflation expectations late last week, and we thought for a while, and we thought this was the appropriate thing to do. Yeah, because everybody can handle a 75 basis point increase during uh, recessionary trends. We're heading towards a recession, um, but we are suffering from greedflation because that money is going is already at the top, and it's getting concentrated more through mergers and acquisitions. And the producers are the people that have the means to acquire the businesses. And I say this about many things. Money is buying these producers and it isn't really hard work anymore. It's money is, is making people uh, crazy with the idea that they can accrue more. And money begetting money has zero value to society. It's purely sociopathic greed um, and profiteering. They, it's so that they have more money. Nobody needs to be a billionaire. Okay, so the next, I'm going to keep going. The next article is in the Hatch Ideas channel. Uh, tech billionaire Mark Cuban warns of painful shakeout in stocks and crypto. Don't even know what that means. Quotes Warren Buffett to support his prediction. Basically, he's saying what everybody else um, with half a brain is saying is that things are going to start collapsing, particularly crypto and whatnot, um, where it's pegged to the U.S. dollar. Again, crypto has no value. It's pegged to the U.S. dollar. So when the economy suffers, Bitcoin will suffer. And so will all of the crypto, uh, NFTs and, and meme stocks and all of that kind of stuff. People are going to start pulling their money out. And the real worth is based on the fundamentals. And those fundamentals aren't being paid attention to in a whole host of things. I already talked about it, but it didn't get recorded. So, meh. Uh, this article is over at uh, businessinsider.com by Theron Mohammed or Taryn Mohammed. I don't know how they pronounce their name. Um, but uh, we'll keep on talking about this. Genuine disruptors with solid business models will emerge as winners. It's so basic business 101. Um, you know, if... It wasn't for the fact that this is Mark Cuban, who has a history and a panache and and the ability to you know, convert um, that that investment into additional wealth. And anybody could say this. Anybody that's in business could say this. Anybody with half a brain would. The next article is in uh, the Hatch Ideas channel. Bank of England hikes for interest rate. That's a 13-year high as inflation nears 10%. Here in the States, I'm guessing that it's going to hit around 13% by the end of November. <clears throat> um, they moved 25 basis points or a quarter percent, and the Federal Reserve here in the States uh, jacked it up uh, 75, uh, 0.75 uh, percentage points uh, yesterday. So that just makes everything... Uh, harder to acquire for those that need the lower interest rates. But the people that have money, they can still get the lower interest rates because they basically walk in there with $500,000 uh, uh, of of uh, liquid assets and say that they need $2 million and the interest rate is magically dropped because they have so much wealth. But the people that are perceived higher risk, like me, um, we have to struggle to get the interest loan, uh, the loans at a rate that we can handle uh, because we don't have all of those, all of that extra money, right? So really the risk is from, well, everybody has risk. Uh, it's hard to, to explain this because not everybody has the same level of risk, you know, but if you say to somebody that can afford a 3% loan that it's 6%, well, now you've priced them out. And that means that they're going to have to go somewhere else to get this loan and the risk is higher. So somebody just threw in my chat, want to become famous by followers, primes and viewers. You know what? That's how you get banned. Bye-bye.
not interested in buying followers. If I wanted to buy followers, then I'd have followers because, you know, I can buy followers, but I'm not interested in that. It's, it's underhanded. It's sleazy. If nobody's interested in me, which, you know, for all intents might very well be fine. You know, I'm happy to talk into the wind. Uh, I'm doing this for me. And if other people get a benefit out of it, so be it. Yeah, I'm going to leave this in the podcast too. And over on the YouTube channel. Anyway, this article's and you came in at a really bad time because for the last hour, my mixer decided to derp and not record my voice. Anyway, now it says that everything is still fine and who knows if it really is, but you picked a bad time to try and sell me followers. I'm not interested in that garbage. Anyway, Bank of England raises its interest rates to a 13 year high um, because inflation is moving into the 11% range. I think here in the States, we're going to hit 13 by the end of November. Anyway, this is an article over at Business Insider by Harry Robertson. I'm going to keep on going on. I actually have construction going on outside as well. Ugh, today is just uh, seemingly a horrible day. <coughs> Pardon the cough. I didn't even hit my cough button. The next article is Abbott pauses baby formula production in Michigan after severe storms. In that previous hour, by the way, I got on my soapbox there shouldn't be a company that is in charge of all of production of baby formula. And there isn't enough uh, competition because they get mergers and acquisitions underway and every, all of that wealth and influence and control goes into billionaires. And so here we have Abbott who, because of water uh, flooding some area, it can't be the first time that this was observed uh, as a trend happening uh, possible, but, Now there isn't any baby formula again from this plant. And since all it takes is one company to close one producer and 25% of the market is wiped out, which means empty shelves in many places because there are a bunch of tools out there that think that it's a market opportunity to go out and get as much formula as possible and then sell it on Craigslist and eBay and whatever else places y'all are scumbags. This isn't a market opportunity in a game. You need to let people who have babies get the food. How do I know that it is? Because I've seen people carry out shopping carts worth of baby formula. The same thing happened with the pandemic. People were buying uh, flatbeds full of paper products and storing it in their garage. You know, pallet after pallet. You guys are tools. Society should ostracize you for that kind of crap. Anyway, you click the link, you get taken over to CNBC. Yes, I'm irritated for more than one reason now. Um, so uh, it's kind of like falling down. I, I'm, today has rubbed me the wrong way. Cosmetics giant Revlon files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Um, when you click the link, you get taken over to CNBC. Lauren Thomas is the author. Um, So Revlon's been around for a long time. And um, basically what I've witnessed uh, upon doing some due diligence is that they are going to collapse. I think that they're going to get purchased by somebody um, and the name will be a subset of somebody else's organization um, and and never rise back out from this. Um, If anything, the name, the, the formulas and everything from Revlon will be integrated into some other recognizable brand. Uh, but Revlon is kind of like there. Um, you walk into any cosmetic store and Revlon is there. Um, the next article is, did I, I didn't put that in the chat, but let me throw that in the chat. Um, the next article is in the word in tech. Uh, Dead stars cannibalism is uh, of its planetary system is the most far reaching ever witnessed, which is, Uh, Really interesting. Uh, When you click the link, you get taken over to fizz.org and an article written by University of California, Los Angeles. Um, And they have a graphic that shows that this white dwarf is kind of pulling in asteroids and uh, uh, gas giant planets and 
comets and even icy bodies from far out in the what we refer to as the Kuiper Belt. Um, and uh, they say that it's the first case of cosmic cannibalism, which astronomers have observed a white dwarf consuming both rocky metallic material from nearby asteroids and um, icy material from its uh, Kuiper Belt. Anyway, uh, you can read more about it over on the phys.org website. Um, the next article, I'm moving fast because, like I said, <laughs> the last hour may, makes me feel like I wasted an hour of my existence. Um, not that I had a lot of people in my chat considering I had somebody come in here and try and pimp followers for money, which can't be real. It just it can't be real people. If you're paying somebody, it's not legit. You know, follow me and then show up. If that's if you're going to do something like that, then just follow me. You know, move that counter right there to 100%. Follow me and uh, show interest in the show. You know, all of this fake crap. Anyway, um, Peloton is riding off into the sunset, I think. Um, I said stuff a little bit more, co more coherent in the previous hour. Uh, the stationary bikes convenience made it a pandemic winner. People are tired of spending a god awful amount for a bike. Um, and they'd rather go to a gym and socialize in person. Uh, now that when you exhale, you don't die. Uh, but don't worry people who don't take the vaccine and don't wear a mask. They'll still push that effort to try and kill you with a breath um so this is uh the new york times article by holly burns about peloton they go into greater detail about what it is they lost 439 million dollars and laid off 20 percent of its workforce uh, as opposed to planet fitness which grew 100 and, or 1.7 million in 2021 and opened up 132 new locations yeah so i think peloton is riding off into the sunset uh, the next article is over in um, the Warcrafters channel because of the source, but not the topic because it's about Sonos and Warcrafters is definitely not about uh, audiophile stuff uh, or tech. I mean, it, Warcrafters is about gaming, first person shooters and stuff like that. Anyway, my aggregator grabbed it uh, from PC Gamer. When you click the link, you get taken over to the site and they talk about it. It's originally sourced from Reddit by way of Verge. And essentially somebody was sent six times their original order or $15,000 worth of product. But it wasn't this innocuous mistake and oops, we sent you 15 grand worth of product. No, this person received what they paid for, $15,000 worth of product, um, when it should have been one sixth of that price. So bummer there. Um, hopefully they'll just take it all back and won't charge anybody Apparently there was a glitch on the Sonos site and more than one person uh, on Reddit is complaining about it. Um, so clean up your act, Sonos. The next article is over in, um, I think it's the Warcrafters channel as well. Let me make sure I scroll up. Yep. Um, AOC, a manufacturer of some tech, unveils a flat ultra wide 34 inch mini LED gaming monitor. It's $1,500. Um, Pretty neat in its feature set, 170 hertz refresh rate, has a USB hub, uh, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1, 90 watts of power, KVM capabilities, um, pretty broad gamut for its color, so it's accurate um, and, and broad, so it's not just... <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I'll just move on. Um, when you click the link, you get taken over to PCGamer.com. Uh, Chris Seswick is the author of this article. And uh, that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. They make a reference to Alienware's 34-inch and to um, the um, Asus ROG Swift. Um, I use Asus for everything that I've got, uh, but I don't have that particular monitor because it's like $2,400. Um, at any rate... For me, I'm not too partial to really high-end displays. I can't justify spending $2,400 for a monitor. Um, tech goes by too fast, and so 
you know, buying a monitor today means that six months from now, something better is going to pop up on the horizon. And I don't like buyer's remorse. So the next article and the last one for this, I'm hustling through this. This is going to be a 30 minute show. I'm getting out of here. Um, but I do want to thank anybody who came by in the previous hour and for this hour or this 30 minutes. Uh, but I need a break today. Today's just killing me. Um, so at any rate, this last one is in the Stock Marketeers channel. Lego is to build a $1 billion carbon neutral toy factory in Virginia, uh, which is awesome. I, I like domestic manufacturing. Um, there's a whole lot of economics discussion that can be in there, business discussion that can be in there, sociological discussion that can be in there. Uh, but not today. If you're interested, come back tomorrow after I recharge and, and um, uh, get whatever is going on in my system out. Um, Lego is Lego, not Legos. It's Lego bricks, not Legos. Uh, the company said 100% of the factory's energy needs will be matched by an on-site solar park and that the plant will be designed to minimize energy consumption. Um, when people say carbon neutral, uh, I always suspect that uh, there's going to be some type of financial remuneration for such um, and that it's not truly carbon neutral because a whole bunch of Lego brick can't be uh, carbon neutral based on solar power alone. Um, there's a whole massive carbon footprint in Lego brick alone. Um, Mike Murphy is the author. Uh, it's written for marketwatch.com. And um, they say that uh, in a statement, Denmark-based Lego said construction of the 1.7 million square foot facility in Virginia's Chesterfield County near Richmond will begin in the fall. With toy production expected to begin in the second half of 2025. Lego said that the plant will employ more than 1,700 workers to mold, process, and pack its plastic bricks, which is awesome. Um, can't wait. Uh, I'm going to have to go and have a conversation and see if maybe I'll just... Uh, quit everything and go work at this. I got to move. <laughs> uh, but, you know, getting into the ground floor of uh, Lego manufacturing and working my way up. I mean, all you have to do is put all the pieces together and you're the CEO, right? Okay, I'm done for today. I am done for today. I need a break. Nothing gets somebody hot under the collar, like doing an hour's worth of work and then, and actually more than that. And then there's nothing there on the other side of it. Okay. So I'm done. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.